Okay, so we should probably reopen it. Uh, so I'm reopening the meeting at 7.05. I'm going to ask the board members all to identify themselves. I'm Donna Bate. I'm at large. I live in Montpelier. Jim? Jim Ward, Barry City. Doug? Doug? You're mute. Of course. Not quite. Montpelier. <laughs> Mel? Mel Chambell, Barry City. Justin? Justin Dreschler, Montpelier. And Kim. Kim Cheney, at large member. And Donna, okay. can I just give a little spiel about the reason why we're recording? I think that should be on the record. Sure, absolutely. Okay. Um, so I noted with a meeting open at 7.02, um, as I was putting the attendees together into the minutes, I noticed that Orca Media was not here. Um, as a result, it seems that we would not have a recording of this meeting. Uh, due to the circumstances and not because of any obligation on the part of CVPSA to always record meetings. When ORCA is here, we have recorded this one to comply with open meeting laws at this particular meeting. Um, but this is not our intent for this to be a future practice. This is just a practical decision based on the fact that ORCA is not here in order to apply with it, to comply with the open meeting laws. Okay. And uh, anyone who speaks, all of us, we just have to remember to say our name, please, and particularly our guest. Um, I know we have Joe. Oops, disappeared. Joe, you want to introduce yourself? Full name, sir? Yeah, uh, Intern Chief Joe Aldrich, Fair City Fire Department. And Carrie? Oops, maybe just listening. I'm here, Carrie McCool, Montpelier PD Dispatch Supervisor. Thank you. And the press, I presume, is David. All right. Donna, so, I'm sorry. I, I don't, are, are you planning to discuss on the agenda your summary of the annual working? I don't see it on the agenda, but I have some comments. I'm sorry, the, the annual what? We're, don't you have a write-up of the annual uh, work? I have the annual report. Yes, it's just shared. We, and we can yeah. put it under other business if you want to talk about it. Okay, fine. Okay. So we're going to, I'm asking that we, without any comment on the agenda, that we're going to accept it unanimously by consent. Okay, and then we I asked for public comments again because we weren't recording before. Any public comments? All right, and then it's approval of the January 12th board minutes. Entertain a motion. So moved. Thank you, Mel. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Doug. So we have a motion and a second to accept the January 12th minutes as given. Any comments about the minutes? Okay, all in favor say aye. Move your hand or vocalize. Aye. aye. Anyone opposed? Passes by unanimous consent. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Approve town warning uh, for disillusion. What the town warning says is shall the voters of Central Vermont Public Safety Authority pursuant to 24A VSA chapter 901 50A to vote to dissolve CVPSA consistent with the plan for dissolution adopted by the Public Safety PSA board. And that was the language we were advised to have placed on both town ballots by our lawyer. Discussion about that. I have a question. Whitaker, I have some comments. A question uh, for Jim. Okay. Uh, we have, yes, Kim. For Jim, 
when we voted on this, you said that your I vote was so you could renew the question. I wonder if you're going to do that. Well, um, maybe Justin, you can help me out. Perhaps I put these in the wrong order. Perhaps we should go to uh, the, uh, I was, I brought up the, the warning. And so I did get a draft from our lawyer and I had to turn all the red and dashing out to clean type. And I sent oh. you the draft that we got from Eli for the final, his suggested of the final dissolution plan. Donna, I actually think that it might make sense. I think we might have the cart before the, for the horse here. I think we should probably go into executive session to discuss the legal advice that we got. Okay. I do think that that uh, definitely informs the decision on this, whether it even presented the solution plan. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I think that, I'm still I think that trying makes to sense. make public comment. I was unable to unmute fast enough for you to skip right over me. I felt it was intentional. No, but I'm Joe. Still waiting uh, to think of Stephen, it. wait a minute, Stephen. The board is trying to make a decision of how what order it wants to go in. Any, I mean, that makes total sense to me, um, Justin. Yeah, I think I do think that. Discussed. Yeah. Yep, um, Donna. So Steve did call me. Uh, he was having trouble getting in. So I think it makes sense to allow him to give general public comment because he was trying to get in oh, earlier. I understand that. Now, I whether it's about this particular thing, um, I think it can wait. But if they, if Steve has a general public comment. No, I just wanted to get all the board d d okay. comments first. OK. Uh, uh, Jim, do you have a comment about us going into executive session to discuss our legal advice on this? Yeah, I, I do. Um, <clears throat> and I think this is more appropriate in public session. Um, I tried to find the minutes. And I just for the 12th that was our last meeting right january 12th yeah i attached him to the, tonight's agenda yeah somehow missed them, but because i just went looking for him but anyway the point I was, I was going to make was i was of the impression that the motion was that the committee that was appointed would arrange with the attorney um give them an overview of what the, the issue was so they could go research it. And they were going to report back to the, or the uh, attorney was going to meet with the whole board. I was kind of, um, I'm just wondering if, if others understood it that way or whether it was just me, because I was of the impression that that the attorney was going to speak to the whole board. And I, I think that's what I okay. thought would happen. Okay. I guess I look at $300 an hour and say, but we didn't authorize anyone to make any decisions on costs. We just authorized people to set up an appointment with the attorney. Okay, and, Here, and, here's what the motion read in the minutes. Uh, uh, Justin moved to allocate $2,000 towards the hiring of an attorney to discuss Mr. Whitaker's lawsuit, the potential dissolution of CVPSA, the intersection of these things, and possible options for the board. And that's what... That was the funding for it. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe I was the only one who interpreted it that way, but I thought we were all going to be meeting with the attorney. I'm disappointed that we weren't. But okay, uh, you, you can in executive session. Uh, Doug and Justin. There were three of us there, so we did try to get you know a good. The officers are all there to have a good perspective, and so I, again. We, He's not here. And obviously we didn't understand it that way, Jim. Sorry. Okay. Maybe I was in the minority. Um, All right. There was a I think if we are we going uh, into an executive session to do I think we should go. I think it makes sense to go into executive session at this point, unless we accidentally break privilege. Okay. All right. That's good. So uh Stephen, your comments now. Yeah, I want to just inform the board that it's, again, it's uh, wholly inappropriate to ask each town whether they want to uh, withdraw and then similarly dissolve it before they've even weighed in on that. It's really disrespectful of the voters of which who have been funding this operation for many, many years and people, others have worked on it for a decade or more. So I think you're kind of being impetuous and reckless uh, with this 
hurry to get rid of it to try to corner the money for Montpelier. But you should also know that in the legislature yesterday that they finally heard from uh, the chair of the regional dispatch work group and the engagement level and the enthusiasm for resolving these types of issues was extraordinary to all viewers. And the $20 million that's sitting there is not likely to find its way into Montpelier's hands quicker by dissolving the qualified uh, potential authority or vehicle uh, to, to accomplish this. So I think you're reactionary. I think you're uh, reckless. Uh, I don't think you're adhering to the purpose and the charter and to blame, you know, I, I read the dissolution plan, and this is the first I've seen of the annual report, which was required to be made available prior to the public hearing in December. So y'all are running so roughshod over process and law and the charter that you really ought to just take a pill, you know? Okay, any other comments? I'll wrap it up, Stephen. Jim, that's you enough. Are okay, thank you. And Jim, you have your hand up and then- Well, I, I just wanted to make a comment on what, what Justin said. The risk of continuing to talk about it is not breaking privilege. There is no privilege. The risk is being in an executive session and just in discussing something that's not exempt from, from public uh, um, view. So um, I, I'm not sure whether or not hiring the attorney is, is something that, it, it is under the, the umbrella of possible uh, uh, litigation, but the dissolution part is not something I don't think that, that is an exemption, but I'll leave it at that. I, I agree with that, Jim. I think that when I said to go to the executive session, I think what we wanted to do is be able to reveal the legal advice that we got during that meeting, and then we can come out. I, I would want to do it for the very limited purpose but I don't, if, as soon as we reveal legal advice here, it could potentially be a break of privilege. No, that's that's um, totally appropriate. Yeah. Um, Stephen, I do want to just, Don, I just want to comment regarding Steve's comment. Um, I view these um, things, the dissolution and voting, whether to stay in the authority is just concentric circles. I don't see any conflict at all between the two. CVPSA is not dissolving CVPSA. CVPSA is putting the question before the voters. Nobody's taking this thing out of the hands of the voters. Quite the opposite. The voters can do whatever they want. You can advocate as hard as you want for them, for people to vote against dissolution. In fact, that's what citizens do. That's what participating in democracy is. And so this is um, this is not an autocratic decision by any means. It's a uh, it's the first step in allowing the voters to have their will, um, be, you know, be be heard and be exercised. So, you know, write an editorial. You know, David, I'm sure will. Uh, We'll sure, surely we'll print it. Try to convince me. Well, you were you were you can't tell me that board. you can't tell me that they that we're dissolving it because we're not. I guess my point is that you were appointed to the board to effectuate and and promote CVPSA's uh, effectiveness, and instead you're undermining it. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would say that I I think I was pretty clear in my email that I think that the uh, that the oath that we took is inconsistent with your um, your perspective. But I think that we should go into executive session. I just wanted to make that clear that yep. CVPSA is not dissolving CVPSA. We have no authority to do that. All we can do is put it before the voters. Okay, and now- that, that question needs to be voted on again. So I do want, I agree with you. Let's see what the legal advice was. And I'm is that- Sorry to say that I don't have the language right in front of me for the executive session. I don't know if Justin knows it. It's just I don't know that we're going to executive session to discuss uh, and, and legal uh, advice. Present the legal opinion that you receive. Okay, I I can't usually try to quote the, the charter language, but I I don't have that print out in front of me. Okay, a second to Jim's motion for executive session. I'll, I'll second it. Kim seconds it. Okay, further discussion, board. All right, let's vote. How many want approved going into executive session? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Okay, it was somebody else. All right. I think I got everybody. Yeah. 
Uh, have a motion to come out of executive session at 7.55. So moved. Thank you, Mel. Second? Second. Thank you, Jim. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. So in the discussion of the dissolution plan would entertain a motion to accept the plan as presented this evening. So moved. Thank you, Mel. Second? I'll second. Thank you, Doug. Further discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. No. Okay, so we'll do a roll call. Uh, Jim Ward? No. Kim? No. Doug? Yes. Mel? Yes. Justin? Y yes. Hold on. Yes. Uh, and then Donna, after you're done with the vote, I'm just going to need the exact language of the motion. Okay. And uh, and uh, mine's a yes. So we have four yeses and two noes. Uh, I'm sad, Jim, that you couldn't see the reason for it, but I understand differences. Uh, thank you. Uh, hey. Okay, so Donna. Yep. Sorry, Jim. Well, I was just going to say that, that I, I certainly understand the, the motivation behind it. And it's a matter of how comfortable you are with, with just leaving it alone and let it sit. I, I think it would be fine. And I don't think Whitaker's going to amount to anything. Um, I think he's going to end up having no one defending him or, or, or he's just going to be on his own. And that, But that's okay. I, I'm fine with st standing alone. Okay. But, uh, actually, um... It's a two thirds vote, isn't it, Justin? It is, and that's exactly two thirds. So it's yep. four and a half, so it doesn't pass. It pass. Sure does. Does it? Four out of six is two thirds. Okay. However, okay. one thing you haven't done is figure out whether there's a two thirds majority of the voters represented by the people voting yes. Well. That's, I'm sorry, because we're just talking about the board for the actual disillusion plan. No, and the motion each... was to accept the delusion plan that was presented tonight. I don't there's know if you want to or something, there's Justin. A provision in the... Kim, please. Uh, Justin, you said you wanted the motion. No, no, hold on. So Kim is... Um... Kim is right about that, Donna. Can I get the motion? Then can we come back to Kim's question? Because I think we followed the procedure fine, but let's just, can I just get the motion so that the, the, the minutes are right? I think it was, um, Mel, the you motion. Can me. It was to move Mel. to accept the warning, warning. right? No, no, this Dissolution. is a delusion plan. Pardon? I, the, 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 yeah, okay. It was to move to accept the dissolution. No, I can't do the words. Dissolution yeah. plan? Yes. Dissolving plan? Yep. That's all it was. That was presented that tonight. Was presented yes. by the chair to the board. Um, so, Donna, what Kim was saying is that the charter language says upon a, a, the affirmative vote of directors representing at least two thirds of all votes entitled to be cast on behalf of all members and comprising at least two thirds of the directors present. I think we meet both of those pretty clearly. Um, so it's the vote of the directors representing at least two thirds of all votes entitled to be cast on behalf of all members. So you need to have at least two thirds of the directors there and then you need to get two thirds of those is how I read it. Yep, okay, that's me too. Yeah, I, I tried to count that up. I think Donna represents all the voters and probably with the two Montpelier votes, it could be two thirds, but I don't know that. 
Um, you got one berry. And, and one berry vote, yeah. It, it, it would be close. But I think the thing to do is that our, let's count it up at our leisure because the votes are what they are. And in order to answer that question, you're gonna to have to look at the checklists, which it's a pain in the butt. But uh, it has to be done and we don't have a legal vote. Uh, Jim, did you get that? Uh, Kim, Kim has gone to the section of the charter that talks about that there has to be two thirds of the voters from mm -hmm. our municipals represented in the people who voted for this. So then you have to add up the population of Montpelier Barry, and then I'm Montpelier and Barry. So we have two Montpelier people voting yes one Barry population voting yes. So we would add those populations, Montpelier twice, Barry once, and then for my vote, it'd be worth the population of Barry and Montpelier. Yeah, there's probably a no. And then the, the no's are the population you represent in Barry, which really is only, I mean, yours, and then Kim, who's one at large. Yeah. Excuse me. Yes, Doug. I used to think I was, Semi intelligent. Now I'm convinced. That I'm, <laughs> now I'm convinced that I may not be. You mean our vote as a board tonight depends on the number of voters in Barry and Montpelier? Yes, to to, to have no. That's what the How charter that? says. I think the lawyer just said two thirds I, of the board vote, but it does have that other language yeah. in the charter. I think the idea, Doug, is that then the small, if for some reason the CDPSA was made up of a bunch of small towns um, that had like no people, that they couldn't hold everybody else hostage. I think that's the theory behind it. Yeah. It's like the House of Representatives versus the Senate. Well, I think oh, the theory is. Please consider your vote. The theory is a little messed up because you'll never know exactly what the numerical breakdown of the voters are in Montpelier and Barry. You know, you won't know that until March. Mm -hmm. Then you're not going to be sure. And this is just to put it before. Okay. Yes, Jim. Maybe I'm oversimplifying this, but I just got to, if you're appointed from a town, from a city, you represent that population of that city. If you are elected at large, you represent both, which means that that vote actually carry more weight than than the appointed ones. Uh, and you add it up and it comes to two thirds of the population. It, it, I think it's exactly what Justin's saying. It had to do with big states and little states. I know, but it states big it. Big counties and little counties. Chittenden runs the, the state because Chittenden County has more people. Okay, That's but what whatever it is, Jim, Kim won't accept this vote until we get a count, an exact count of oh, the no, populations that, and I, I think Kim said. So what are you going to do? I think Kim? Kim said we should work it out later. Kim said let's work that out later and just make sure that we're well, right. But we're, and we can always just to, run it by Eli. Yes, but if we if we don't pass this, then the warning can't go, and the warning has to go at noon tomorrow. So it is time sensitive, Justin. I think no, we I just think Kim said that this vote is good to go. Yeah, Kim said this is good to go. He just thinks that we should make sure we do the research and make sure I, that I didn't we, hear we that right on the back okay. end. Yeah. Okay. Well, That's what he's saying. Can, right. I, can I comment? We have to read the charter on? and we don't know the numbers, so we'd have to calculate them. That's all. So can take I, it to. Can I comment on this? Short, Stephen. So I'm doing, maybe I'm thinking of this overly simplistically, but. Jim and Mel's each appointed by Barry City, their vote cancels each other. Yep. The two at the two at large votes, uh, meaning Donna and Kim, uh, cancel each other. And all that's left is Justin, and that's he's from the smaller city. So and Doug. No, it's Justin, Justin and Doug from the smaller city means it didn't get two thirds. Because Barry's not two thirds of the voters. Jim, please. Wait. 
Mel and I yeah, do not cancel each other. She has the total population of the city that she represents. That goes to a yes. Doug's total population. Doug, are you appointed or elected? He's at appointed. large. Yeah. Oh, okay. No. I'm appointed. Appointed. So he gets the whole population of the city. And you have uh, Doug Montpelier. and Justin left. So you have two of Montpelier's. You don't split the difference. It's they represent. I I represent okay. every single person in the city, and Mel represents every person in the city. Both of our votes get 100% credit toward whatever the uh, the vote was. Okay. So I would. I think we did it without any problem at all. And, and I think if Kim wants to make a mess about it, for what? What can he do? I just want to count it. I have had two theories. I, I do think Jim okay, Ward's so, theory is. Uh, Mel, Mel is has her hand one. up. You've said a lot, Kim. Mel, um, if if it were necessary that we get a count of all the people in each city, and then figure out how we weigh in, what would be the point of us even being representatives? I thought the deal to being a representative is that you're representing whatever your constituency is. If it doesn't really count, why are we even doing this? And I'm saying that because I think we're working against each other again. Mm -hmm. I would love to see us make a decision and then not turn on each other to prove a point. Thank you. Thank you. Mel, I just want okay. to respond. Uh, no, Kim, Kim, wait, halt. We, we've been in this discussion a long time. I, it, I really well, something new. You're going to say something brand new, Kim? Well, I'm just going to point out that I'm wanting to make sure we follow the charter. That's all. Yes, once, yes, yes. And I'm okay. uncertain whether that's the case. And I'm hoping that that's what the lawyers were in the conversation for. Yes. It would be easy yes. to figure out tomorrow. I just don't have the list in front of me. Okay. So we have Pat. We have passed this dissolution plan. And now we need to look at the warning that would go on the ballots for Barry and Montpelier. It's asking the voters, as Justin pointed out so well before, to make a vote to decide whether or not to dissolve CVPSA. All in favor of this warning, uh, I want a motion first, sorry, a motion to accept this warning and place it on the ballots. So moved. Okay, Doug second. Further discussion on the warning. Doug, your hands up. Oh. Any further discussion on the warning? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed on the warning say nay. I didn't see uh, a hand. Or... I'm going to vote aye. Aye. Okay, Jim. I was going to abstain because I'm a little confused right now. The, the first vote was to to dissolve. This vote is the wording of the of the vote, right, on the ballot. It, yes. This is the wording that goes on the ballot in both cities. This is about the wording of the warning. Yes. All right. Okay. So that means it passed unanimously. Thank you. Uh, we've already had our executive session on the lawsuit and we've already within the delusion plan approved additional funds for the legals now annual meeting is an other business and i admit to the error of not getting it on the website it was an inadvertent error i really just forgot it <laughs> I did get it to the towns, both cities, for their annual report on time. So I would like the board to accept that indeed I made a mistake and I 
uh, won't ever do it again <laughs> <laughs> for lots of reasons. <laughs> and and I would appreciate the, the board accepting my humble attempts um, and recognizing that it was an error and that it was an inadvertent error and that I won't do it again. The board would make a motion that would uh, uh, would be good. I have some comments on the actual wording, but subject to that, I... Uh... I'm asking about the error I made of not getting it onto the website as promised. Okay, I have no problem with that. So... Uh, I, I would move to forgive the error. Okay. Second. Mel second, thank you. Any other comment? Stephen, you wanted to talk about this? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a question about the wording of it, though. Uh, you can question all you want about the wording, Kim. Uh, I had many questions about some other annual reports. Go right ahead. Um, in the third paragraph, you say, Cities and Capital Fire submitting a winning application and were awarded 2.5 million. That's not what happened. There was a conditional appointment, a commit conditional acceptance, and no money has been awarded. So okay, that's, so I that's, understand. That's how you worded it. That's not how the cities word it. Or Joe, Joe's here, and he. Well, you ought to face it, the I, facts. I was yes. sitting and heard Commissioner Morrison, so I understand that you disagree with that. Donna, it isn't a question of my opinion. It's a question that no money has been awarded, and it's a conditional approval. And until that's changed, that's a not a factual statement. I'm sorry, I disagree with you. I mean, I heard what Commissioner Morrison said right there in the joint committees. Well, I that did too. We're not a conditional thing about governance, that indeed they were going wow. to be in the second round. So I disagree with you, Kim. So that's okay. Well, Madam Chair, I apologize, but I, I need to excuse myself. Oh, but thank you for being here for all the crucial votes. Thank you, Jim. Good night, Jim. So and we my... just have to agree to disagree, Kim. Well, I just think it's factually wrong, and I think I, it's leading I, people into a bad understanding of where we are. Okay, noted. Okay, anything else under other business? Or other people want to make a comment about the ANA report? That's fine. Okay, uh, no other business before this body? Well, congratulations us for getting through a very difficult meeting and thank you all and have a good evening. Thank you.